the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Most High, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Recha Kadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well, who taught me this truth. Enough respect and salutations to the fellow Akim, the house of David, the hopeful elect. This dream is um, talking about the famine that's um, about to um, come up. Some places are already ex um, are uh, experiencing famine now. That's outside of the United States. Um, some states are already saying that um, like different WalMarts and different stores are um, completely empty, the shelves and stuff. <clears throat> but you know, there's there's nothing compared to what's about to come these visions are set for an appointed time and we are at the end and they are speaking you see it's going to get much worse here in Babylon the Great hold on to your horses <laughs> Ezekiel 33 and verse 7 so thou O son of man I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And this is the fear that you should have. Not a fear of the sword. Not a fear of the famine. Not a fear of the pestilence that is embarking on this place. But the fear of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. When you hear the rest of this lady's dream, her vision, you will understand that the prophets before us of old prophesied of what? War. Matter of fact, let's just get it. Okay? And we'll, we'll get back to it very soon. Jeremiah, the prophet, 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms. And what we prophesied about? Of war and of evil and of pestilence. For those of you that are not on the same accord, singing the same song of war, evil, and pestilence, Revelation 13, these prophecies soon to take place, then you are against Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. You don't believe. You don't have faith. You don't have hope. You understand? See, <laughs> the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Let's get it. And we're going to come back and with some more precepts, Lord will. I started off in his classroom. Um with the teacher and I think she was about to do a pizza party but she didn't have the food I think she paid for it but they didn't have the food and then I um it switched to where I was with I think I was married and I had a um I had a child and I had a small baby on me and um we were going to different stores they didn't have any food they had you know other stuff like you know um clothes and stuff but we we didn't care about any, any, any clothes or anything like that um and it was like famine it was like famine seriously nothing we had other things but nothing to eat and so we went to this restaurant and i remember that the restaurant um they ran out of food they didn't have any food and i think that um they probably thought they had food because they were open and I saw people sitting at tables and stuff, but I didn't see any food. And I, I had no one these people were there for a long time, but they didn't have any food. 
Hey, the proof is in the pudding. Okay, let's read nine. Jeremiah 29, it's like Jeremiah 28 and verse 9. The prophet which prophesieth of peace. And you have those men, you know, out there that's speaking safety, speaking peace when there is none. It says, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass. Oh, <laughs> which prophet? The false prophet or the true indeed servant of the Lord? The real prophet. It says, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, hath truly sent him. So you're going to realize in that day, the men, starting with the elders and apostles of the great millstone, the men that have been teaching you and telling you these things for years, years and years, you're going to know that he, been, he has been among you. Okay, let's get this real quick. Jeremiah 48. Oh, 42. Jeremiah 42, verse 21. And now I have this day declared it to you. And you know, us declaring, having, you know, being the heralds of Yahweh Shah, we use certain tangible things. In this case, we would use this, uh, this woman's dream, her vision that she had of the lack of bread thereof, of the ones that not... You're not even worried about the food, uh, the, 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 the clothes, she said. you worried about eating. She said famine is real. And this is the vision that the Lord has given her, you know, to share it. And the water you have by Shem Shai, he has uh, allowed me to run across this video, okay, to merit with scripture, to let you know this thing is real, man. All right? And this is what we're declaring to you. It says, but ye have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, your power, nor anything for the which he has sent me unto you, nor anything, nor any dietary laws, nor uh, the, the, the adulterous generation that we're in. Uh, stop transgressing the law. You're right. Which is sin. Stop sinning. You know, you, you haven't did anything. Hey, uh, Matter of fact, uh, go research it yourself. All right? The names of the Lord, how true and powerful they are. You know, when, when, you, when you're trying to bring another deity or idol inside this fold. You know, like, like the word uh, Jesus. That has no power. All right? That's not even a Hebrew term. <laughs> you know? Let's continue on. Verse 22. Now, therefore, now, uh, Salaki, know, therefore, now, certainly, that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilences, in the place where ye desire to go and to sojourn. So no matter where you go, because further on in this dream that she had, which we're going to get to it, Lord will, uh, she's going to tell you that she was on foot. You know, and you, you, she she don't say it in those words, you know. Um, but she was passing by a field, letting you know that she's not driving, she's not, you know, flying, she's not doing anything, she's walking, you know. And the husband that she, she mentioned, you know, I don't know if this lady's married or not, but this is a vision that she's uh, given us. And so you need to take heed. And why are you going to die by the sword, the famine, or the pestilence? It's because you have not obeyed. You have not come into the full fold, all right, and the obedience that is within Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. All right, if you do, you might have mercy. If you repent from your wrongdoings and your uh, Stockholm Syndrome estate that you're in, uh, maybe the Lord will have mercy on you. You understand? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel again. Uh, chapter 5, this is verse 16. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. See, the Lord's words are true. They don't go out void. They don't go out empty. 
It's not, all right, like the Lord is swinging at nothing that's there. No, he has a 100% batting rating for lamb of terms. The prophecies are undefeated. Prophecies kill confusion. You're going to know then that certain men that's been on the highways and hedges for years been prophesying to you of these things, of these sad perils, this chaotic chaos that's coming down the pipeline. Let's listen to a little more. Um, I know we walked past this um, this whole field, and I think I had a headache or something, and the grains from the field or something like home remedy, they got rid of my head, my headache. So it wasn't like um, we didn't have any pills or anything like that. I think the Lord put it on my husband to let me eat the grains or something like that, something in the field that was of the earth. And not only did um, did it stop us from stop me from having a headache, um, it it filled us up. And I had a knowing that no technology worked. Like it was no technology. You know how we feel like we're so advanced with the with the phones and stuff like that and the internet. None of that worked. Um, none of the technology worked. I had a knowing. Um, I had a knowing that we was in famine for. Um, it was gonna be a long time. Like, I don't even think there was a leader. Like there was no leader. I feel like there was a leader in his dream. There was no technology, at all. But. God warned me to, like, I remember, and I don't even think it was a warning. Yes, it was. So, during that time, I guess a lot of people, a lot of married people was were leaving each other and going back home to their families. And uh, when I got up and I prayed about it this morning and I put it on my phone, I texted in my phone, God said, no spouse should leave their family. family. Like, I saw husbands going back home to their parents and I saw wives going back home to their parents during this famine. They were staying like they were split apart. Like they couldn't take what was coming out. I mean what was going on. So they split. They were split and um I had asked the Lord about that because I was like, okay, what is going on here? And what's going on here is is an ensign being lifted up, letting you know the bridge is out ahead. Calamity is coming. People are going to be losing their MF and minds. You people are going to fall <laughs> out. You people are going to bug out, which you, which you already bugged out. You people are going to fall apart, man. You're just going to melt in your weakness, in your non stableness. You see? Because what she said, uh, she was walking by a field and, and ate whatever the fields, you know, the Lord put it on her husband, man, to eat some grain or grass, whatever it may be. You know, uh, that, that makes me think of the story of, uh, you know, wandering in the desert, that manna, right? Now we got the spiritual manna. See, the Lord, matter of fact, let's get this in Luke, the book of uh, Luke. 1 and 37 tells us what? For with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. So you have to be, <laughs> the Lord has to be with you. It ain't no you choosing, Lord, I'm, I'm here this day to give my, no, man. These visions, these dreams, these prophecies that the men having, the, uh, these women uh, spewing out, man, you need to take heed because this is the time that we're in. You know, she said it wasn't no leaders. Why? Because leaders of our people caused them to air, man. The blind lead the blind. Wait, you're going to fall into a ditch. So those of you out there now speaking prophecy or what's coming down this pipeline, all right, you're going to get caught in the crosshairs. You see? She said, uh, Husbands was leave. See when you when you come. Matter of fact, <laughs> let's get that Isaiah, uh, the book of Isaiah thirty three and six. It says, "And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times." What times? The times of Jacob's trouble. 
the time where you're gonna have to be a true refugee, true pilgrim on this earth with your family, with your kids. You heard the lady dream. That ain't so far fetched. You bugging out and falling out. <laughs> your woman realized you weak. It says, and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. See, because most of you are going to feel not having food. Most of you are going to feel not having a phone, not having technology, not having a simple means of even connecting with someone. Lord, he's going to take away all that. All the things you got acclimated to, all the things you got accustomed to in Babylon the Great. If you don't put those things by the wayside and cling onto this strong tower, all right, then... Hey, you're going to fall apart pretty much, man. Weak husbands, hey, husbands leaving their wives. Lord, Lord, hey, Lord tells you all this, man. The book of Matthew chapter 10. Let's go to 34. It says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. What a sword do? Sword separates whatever you cutting. And this is what the Lord is going to do is but what the Lord gives us, the Lord gives us this comfort of the scriptures. Let's get some here. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse, uh, let's start at 20. It says, in famine he shall redeem thee from death. It says, and in war from the power of the sword. Because these are plagues that are being sent upon this place, just like he sent upon Egypt, man. All right, he delivered them from the famine. He delivered the true believers from the famine, from the pestilence. All right, guided them, all right, through through the wilderness, man. All right, and saved them from the sword, which Pharaoh was chasing them, and he was ready to put that sword to them, man. How much more in these days? Let's jump to 22, and it says, At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, <laughs> neither shalt thou be afraid, of the beast of the earth. Because again, we're going to be refugees, man. We're going to be pilgrims around here, man. You're not going to have the comfort uh, uh, the comfort of your own home. Eating some popcorn, drinking a nice brewski. You're not going to have that comfort. That, that is going to be long done away with. All right? And again, if, if this vision, all right, from this woman is, is, is hey, on point. We marry with scriptures did. Hey, how much more you need to be worried? How much more you need to cling to the Lord, man? All right. Let's get one more. Well, a couple more. And we'll end it off. The book of uh, Psalms 37. And this is just a comfort. Let you know. It says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. What time? <laughs> and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Who? Is the scriptures talking about right here? So you, if you got some that's going to be satisfied, how much more the ones is not going to be? That's going to be dissatisfied because they didn't run to that strong child. They didn't make the Lord Yahweh by Shem Abishai their refuge. You see. So again, we're in some beautiful times, man. All right. Lord willing, this was edifying and comforting. On to the next one. Shalom.